this mode though. Uh, <laughs> you guys, I am back with the consistency as promised. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys my overall opinion at the beginning for you impatient people. I'll just say flat out that I definitely highly recommend the iPhone 15 Pro. Now I am recording right now on said iPhone 15 Pro. So I don't have any fancy like shots that I'm gonna include of the phone in the video. I have the midnight version. Um, you can look it up if you wanna see what it looks like. Um, but I will be including like screen recordings and pictures and photos and screenshots of the features that I'm gonna discuss in this video. So look out for those. I'm gonna divide this up in a pretty basic pros and cons manner. So first, the pros. This phone has all the things about Apple that we already usually like. Um, if you are not an Apple fan, that's kind of your typical like high-tech smartphone technology, like having nice cameras and a bright phone screen and decent battery life. I think what makes the biggest difference about how impressed, honestly, you are with um, Apple's phones is the phone that you're coming from, or at least their new models. Um, so for example, the iPhone 15, whole lineup, the iPhone 15 regular, iPhone 15, iPhone 15 Pro, and Pro Max, um, those came out this September. I, Apple, I mean, drops a new iPhone every, iPhone lineup every September. Um, and so this is the newest one, but I haven't had a new iPhone since uh, the 11, which is about pretty much four years ago. Cause again, they drop a new one every year. So I think you guys should definitely consider what phone you're coming from before buying. If you're planning on upgrading or if you're watching this video with intentions to just kind of get the newest thing as well as consider what phone I'm coming from as well. That means that some of the things that I'm excited about might not intrigue you guys if you have a more recent model. So as you saw in the beginning, I included that little clip of me uh, just kind of showing off this new cinematic mode. Now this is something that I'm not sure is specific to the iPhone 15 lineup, but again, me coming from an iPhone 11, I know that it's definitely a newer camera feature. It is so nice, y'all. Again, nobody is surprised that Apple has some of the best smartphone cameras around. Um, however, this is definitely something that I can say makes me really feel like I don't need to buy an actual camera, um, you know, like a Sony or Nikon or something, because the, the focus on this thing, I mean, I'm using it now. And as you guys can see, the background blur and the focus and the clarity, um, it's great. <laughs> I am a pretty much like non-tech savvy person. I mean, as, as much as like, I know, you know, the general stuff like any other person my age, but I don't know um, how many like makeup pixels and all of that stuff iPhone has compared to um, a you know Sony or Nikon or any new camera technology but it's good enough this is where I'm like for anybody that's gonna be doing like I can't even just say beginner because Apple is good for more than just beginner stuff but for anybody that's gonna be doing your average day-to-day -day activities this camera is more than enough, like it's great. And that includes YouTube, as you guys can see for me, in my opinion. Something else that is cool about the iPhone 15 lineup that I'm 100% sure is new is the level of zoom capacity or capability that comes with the iPhone 15 Pro. Again, this is a beginner friendly, kind of just average reviewer or average consumer um, review. So I don't have the specs for you guys, but if you're interested in getting like the millimeters up to which you can zoom, um, the megapixels, you know, you guys can feel free to look all of that stuff up but that is definitely one of the things that i researched that i can actually see and feel the difference of in the phone now that i have it in my hands i have a screen recording that i took demonstrating just how close up to objects and things that you can get with your camera um again that is one of the things that i researched that i can actually see and feel the difference of that is specific to the iphone 15 pro is like you can get way closer to the things that you're trying to um you know catch capture and it'll still have amazing clarity. I'm just like, oh, this is next level. No more like blurry photos when you're a little bit like across the room from somebody that you're trying to take a picture of. Nah, you're getting all the angles, all of the details. The pro for sure is catching up, all of that. You'll see something else that is new to the iPhone 15 Pro. So that, again, this is kind of just a, a list of new camera features that I have all under um, one pro you'll see something else in that screen recording and that is that little bitty box up in the corner that was the zoom context panel i believe that it's called um and that just basically helps you to not lose track of what you're recording like or what was in your original frame once you're zoomed in to you know that nth degree the last thing that i find um like probably the most useful for you know the average person using a camera on a day-to-day -day for basic things um the last thing that i find really cool about the camera is the ability to change the focal point of a photo 
after you take the photo. <laughs> Keyword after. So you guys know how oftentimes you might be trying to take a photo and there's things in your background, right? And your camera doesn't focus on you or the subject of the photo that you want, but it focuses on other things, catches other um, faces or whatever it might be. You don't have to worry about, you know, being frustrated because your camera won't focus to the right thing. Um, because any photo that you take, um, at least I'm pretty sure it's any photo, you can go in your photos and actually edit um, to change the focal point. I'll show you guys a screen recording of this too. But you can go in and actually edit um, the focal point of the video or photo. So no more worrying about the camera capturing some random person's in the background's face instead of your own because you can just go in into your photos and edit it and just do this. My husband is a paid actor, <laughs> lol. <laughs> Moving on. So I would say totally my biggest pro um, for the phone, the iPhone 15 Pro is definitely the camera, especially as a creator. Um, but this next thing is pretty darn cool. <laughs> the next pro that I have written down for y'all is about the very cool, highly talked about action button. When Apple thought of this, I feel like they basically could have just said, let's create a button that does everything. LOL, but as some of you may already know, the action button is a button that comes with the, I, I think the pro models only, so not the regular iPhone 15, um, but with the iPhone 15 Pro like I have, that you can set to any setting or to control any function on the phone pretty much um, that you would like. So I'll show you guys another screen recording of this, um, but you can set it to do not disturb, you can set it to, um, to open up an app that you like, you can set it to um, the camera, opening up the camera, so with the press of one button, your camera will, camera will automatically pop up um, and again you can do that with any other app that you would like as well it's basically called creating a shortcut as, as opposed to you know unlocking your phone um, and searching for the app especially if you have a lot of apps you just press the button and boom cameras up this really just helps with speed and convenience um, so you know again if you're trying to get to your camera in a hurry or if you have an app that you're always going to like maybe um, you work on your phone a little bit and you need to get to like your documents like your excel or your files um, app or your email app on your phone um, anything like that you can create a shortcut to or if you use your flashlight often or if you one of those type of people that keeps your phone on do not disturb hello um, it just does that kind of in in a hurry you know quick in a, in a hurry quick and in a hurry I must say I do kind of miss the little silencer switch, you know, that all the other old iPhones had where you just uh, switched it back and forth to turn on and off your ringer. Um, but that's okay. You know, we're moving on. We're into the future now. Coming to grips with that. <laughs> My next pro is actually a kind of like grouping of things. A lot of these things that I'm about to mention, I don't know if they come with just the iPhone 15 Pro or if they come with iOS 17, which can be downloaded on, you know, any of the recent models of iPhones. Um, and so therefore, um, you know, I'm not sure if they're specific to just the Pro, but the Pro or all of the iPhone 15s actually, I know, come with iOS 17, you know, from the jump. So you'll definitely have these features if you have the 15. <laughs> There's a lot of cool stuff that they incorporated into that update. For example, the Apple Music crossfade feature. It just finally lets you fade from one song into another so that there are no interruptions in your music. So I've heard Spotify did this first, but that's okay. You know, Apple sometimes is late to the game. They, game. they be having uh, their own stuff going on, their own new tech, and that's all right. They finally got with the program, so we're proud. <laughs> There's the um, feature where you can like share contacts with somebody by just tapping your phone with the other person's phone whose contact information you want to share. This is probably the most like highest techy thing I feel like that just, like looks really cool that comes with the newer models. Um, you literally can just like have someone's phone in your phone. And if you wanna share contact information, if you physically touch on um, the top of you all's phones together, like the top where the camera and face ID and stuff is, um, you guys' information will pop up on one another's phones. I've never actually tried that before, um, but I've seen it and of course heard about it. I had done research before upgrading. That is pretty cool. That's another thing though that is just kind of for speed and convenience, which can make a big difference. Um, I say all that to say, you know, it's not adding any new features, it's not like, um, you know, we had issues with the way that we, you know, had contacts before, um, but it is very cool. So, but most of this, you guys, is just about how much into technology you are and how cool you find certain features, how um, much you use your phone and in what capacity. Um, 
yeah but i must say the iphone 15 models just look cooler like again coming from an 11 there's a lot of maneuvers with the phone and just a lot of like um i guess i don't i don't know if the word would be features or like transitions there's a lot of transitions like moving from app to app or closing out apps or opening up things that just look a whole lot cooler than they did i'm gonna include some screen recordings and screenshots of this as well so to begin with you have the always on display which is really cool um just to kind of look at it's basically what the name implies which is that even when your phone is locked so when it's on but you know you have it sat down and like typically where the screen will be black um it actually stays on with the iphone 15 pro and the good thing you know if you don't like this, you can turn it off. It's a setting, you know, you can go in and um, turn off your always on display. Um, but it's very cool. If you want that type of thing, you can totally have it switched on in your settings. And every time you lock your phone, it'll kind of just go dark, um, but it'll be like a darker kind of more low, you know, low resolution-ish. I don't know if resolution is the right word, um, but low key version of your lock screen and it just kind of stays on, but it's locked and so it saves energy. Again, the brightness goes down um, and it's just cool looking. <laughs> you have things like the caller ID screen and the music screen, which are different. And again, I'm not sure if these are things that are specific to the iPhone 15 or iPhone 15 Pro or iOS 17, um, but I know that the iPhone 15 Pro has um, all of these new features for sure. When you're listening to music now, basically the, album cover um for a lot of albums it'll kind of just cover up the whole entire screen as opposed to just being a square album cover you know what i'm saying above like your play button it's cool it's kind of like an immersive experience you know and it fills up the screen really well so that just looks cool and futuristic to me i'm keeping the ball rolling i do have a few what i would consider to be minor cons the first one is related to the action button now i do love the action button but the reason why I have a con with this is because it is confusing sometimes trying to press um, the volume button or the action button, either or, um, and pressing the wrong one between the two because they are very close together. Um, and so if you notice the action button is right above like this much probably right above the volume button like the top volume button um and i found myself so often you guys like after i made sure that i use this so that i can actually see you know how this performs like on a daily basis um after you know like listening to music often and um trying to like turn up my music i often find myself pressing the action button and like wondering why my music isn't turning up or like realizing like hey what am i doing something's going wrong here that's something that happens often and um not like painstakingly often like oh like i just can't you know press the right button um but often enough to where i'm like oh, okay i can see how that can be like an annoying little issue you know um the buttons being so close together and it just being new like i think if we were new used to an action button you know there's typically no other button on that side of the iphone except for the switch but you know that is obviously that's a different maneuver you're like moving something back and forth versus pressing down onto something so having an additional button there can uh cause that to be an issue for some people or maybe i'm just slow and mechanically challenged but who knows another con that i'm not sure if you know this <clears throat> another con that i'm not sure whether will happen to everybody but is a possible concern um is there being app functionality issues in the beginning um so this happened to me and it's also happened to a couple of other people that I know once they upgraded to iPhone 15s or any phone within the lineup. Um, you know, you transfer all your information over. Um, once you get the phone, if you have an iPhone, you can just transfer it over quickly and it'll have all your same settings, apps, contacts, etc. cetera. Um, and so oftentimes, you know, you'll have the same apps there. They'll be there, you'll see them. But once you go to click on it, um, I've noticed people having the same issue that I had with a couple of apps, which is they kind of close up on you or they don't work. They lag really, really bad. Um, and you kind of can't really just use it. You can't use the app because it's not really working. Thankfully, that issue was resolved. Um, if you're wondering, I'm sure you probably will be. Um, I downloaded the app. I mean, sorry, I deleted and re-downloaded the app. Um, one of the biggest ones that gave me issues. I did that and after that it was fine. Um, but it was frustrating at first because I'm like, is my phone tweaking or is the app tweaking? Because, you know, yesterday on my iPhone 11 it was working fine. So, um, yeah, I don't know if it's just you know new phone bug phone booting up i don't know it like downloading all your settings again um it could be a number of things but i don't think that it's a long-term issue so this is something that you know it's good to know about but don't let it deter you i would say this next con is something that i saw from doing more research online um that is important again to you guys if you are even just the average consumer um and you're wondering about you know how to fare i heard about the battery life on the iphone 15 lineups kind of being um not so par but 
nothing amazing um which is expected with the new lineup you expect there to be some upgrades in battery life every time um generally you know because you're paying for it. you're paying new iphone prices um and so you expect the battery life to kind of increase and get better and better especially when the phones are coming with new capabilities that might drain the battery life faster i don't know if anybody else thinks that way but i do i'm like i'm gonna be using these new features and stuff um it could drain a lot of juice um and so it does have a good battery um but apparently it's the same as last year's the iphone 14 pro um which again so brings me back to like i was saying earlier if you have a 14 or 14 pro or 13 um you know those more recent iphone models that's something that you should consider heavily before upgrading because you might not be getting, you know, I guess your money's worth in that sense because you're paying for newer prices, but not necessarily like a newer battery life or certain new features because you might already have um, all of those features in your iPhone as it is. But yeah, other than the battery kind of being the same as it was last year, the same as last year's iPhone 14 lineup battery, um, it's still a great battery. <laughs> like I hardly charge my phone for reference. like. I obviously use my phone for YouTube, but I also like sometimes I edit on my phone and I'm um, checking emails often. I don't have social media, so I don't do hours of scrolling on that. Um, but my phone on average can last me sometimes, or I guess on average, if I had to guess about like a day and a half to two days really without dying. It hasn't died yet since I got it. And it's been, um, I didn't have it since it came out. I got it about um, three weeks ago or so. So that's hopefully, you know, good info for y'all. My last and final con is the probably most obvious one. And ow, ow. <laughs> that hurt. And that is that iPhones are expensive. I don't know what everyone's financial situation is. This is obviously something you'll have to gauge for yourself. But while I, yes, would overall recommend the iPhone 15 Pro, hear my words very clearly and heed my warning. Um, no, nah, jokes aside, I definitely recommend it. But I would say whether or not you upgrade to it or any of the new iPhone 15 models, I feel like it should depend more on your current situation as opposed to the specs of the phone. What I mean by that is you should, like I said earlier, look at the phone that you one, already have, two, what you use the phone for, and three, your finances. Because those are the things that are, that are gonna determine whether you're getting your money's worth and whether it's actually a good investment for you. So for example, we all know we have like some, you know, elder and aunt or uncle or grandma, grandpa who ain't gonna do nothing with their phone, but make a call every two weeks. Like it's not worth it for them to pay for all of these extra high tech features um, because they're not gonna really get good use out of them. Um, so obviously that's a situation where, you know, even if they have an old phone and they need a new one, this type of phone might not be for them. Um, and so obviously, you know, most of you watching, that probably isn't you, but even still consider what you're gonna use the phone for um, and how much. And then of course your finances, guys. I guess I, you know, don't need to say this, but also I feel like I do um, because I would recommend it, but not if um, you can't afford it. Is that bad to say? Just be wise. That's the overall point I wanna make. Um, it's very tempting, y'all know, I mean like, my channel name as of recent is not your average Gen Z. I understand, I'm a part of Gen Z. Like I want the newest iPhone. I do be wanting it. Can we just be transparent here? Um, but we are adulting now and it's not worth it to pay for something that, you know, is this more than what we actually only need. With that being said, if you got it, you know, and if you can do it wisely, I'm all for it. Like. Um, I obviously bought it, but I definitely get good use out of it with YouTube um, and being very active with people, having a lot of relationships, doing ministry, doing a variety of things that I do. With that being said, guys, that's all that I have. I'm so thankful that you made it to this point in the video if you did, and if you're not subscribed yet, that's what you need to be doing right now. <laughs> um, for real, that helps out so much. Y'all know I'm on my journey. Like I talked about in my last video, if you haven't watched that, you should totally go watch it. I talk about why I changed my YouTube name to what it is now. Um, but nonetheless, thank you guys for watching. This is Kai Jene. Feel the need to say that since I changed my name. Um, this is Kai, and I'm so thankful for your view. Thank you, and have a good rest of your day. That was corny, but it's all right. Bye, guys.